lot of talent in this part of British Columbia, and uh, you've just witnessed one, and you're about to witness another very dynamic speaker with a very dynamic presentation. His name is Brian Thiessen. He is the chairman of the Interior Smart Weeder Meter Awareness. Okay, uh, thanks everyone for coming, obviously. Uh, glad you guys decided to come and get educated on uh, some things that you probably didn't know you were gonna learn tonight. Um, so, without further ado, the truth about smart meters. BC Hydro likes to talk about, oh, you know, we call the people up and once they know the facts, these people change their minds or, or decide that they want a smart meter. But uh, we're here tonight to present you with the actual facts. Health is, for most of us here, the number one topic. Without health, you don't have wealth, you don't have anything, you don't have a quality of life, all these good things. So this is why I want to start with health, and I'm going to lay it out to you just as Curtis was doing earlier. Your body is electrical. You have your own frequencies. Every function of your body, as Curtis said, runs on these frequencies. We're talking about basic laws of the universe electromagnetism and the foundation of life. It's really that simple. These are the foundations of why and how you can actually live and breathe and be in this room, think, watch me present, all that other stuff. So this is not for peer review. We don't need any more long-term studies to show if this is true or not. We don't need uh, this agency or these guys to say whether or not this is fact. This is absolute fact. Again, the earth itself, everything in the universe and all of creation has its own magnetism, has own electrical fields, frequencies, properties. Even trees. They're showing even right on this voltmeter that you can get electricity out of trees. Trees have a particular electricity, all of them. You're not alive if you don't have this stuff. All the way down to bacteria, viruses, everything. They even found that the human cell has electric fields as powerful as lightning bolts. Very interesting stuff. Most people probably don't know that. I didn't know that until a little while ago. So since we are all in the universe, we obey these very basic laws. We have trillions of these connections in your human body. As I said, every, every time you blink, everything, these are all electrical triggers and functions that are happening every single second. They are not to be messed with. They're very precise. They need to be a specific way. And this is the problem with cell phones, cell towers, smart meters, these types of devices. All of these functions, every single thing that you do. Now, not only does BC Hydro and Health Canada deny this, your doctors, the top guys in Health Canada or Hydro, they deny this. They don't even think it exists. They don't even believe in this. And I'll explain to you how they've come to this conclusion. They've denied all of this in order to allow it to be that all of these devices are safe. So Curtis may have mentioned this. Your body operates at specific frequencies. You're all operating at a frequency, a specific hertz, cycles per second right now. The, the gentleman in the front here, he had a little cell phone in his pocket. The cell phone went off, probably operating at about 2.4 billion hertz or somewhere in that range, changing every frequency and vibration of his heart and body. Every single second he has that on them. Any of you guys have a phone on you in this room? That's what's happening. We're not to be changing these things. It's not natural. Your human body, it's human antenna. All your cells are fractal antenna. They don't have a choice. So if you're driving by a cell phone tower or by a smart meter, you don't have a choice. Your cells receive that frequency. That's it. And they adapt to what they're being hit with. And in this case, these frequencies cause, cause electrical failure. And electrical failure means disease. And it doesn't always happen right away or every second. But over time, when you keep trying to change someone's frequency to an unnatural state, you're going to have unease or dis-ease. So what do we do? We decide to buy cell phones. We decide to buy cordless phones and all these different things. And we see all these massive growth rates and all these technologies, and we wonder why, year after year, all of these diseases are getting more prevalent. There's more and more problems. Everyone's in the hospital. Our hospitals are full. There's, we don't know what's going on. We have these cell phone towers. I know they're definitely in Vernon. They're everywhere. They're in Kamloops, all over the place. These little routers and collectors, they have a lot of capabilities. These things are like little miniature cell phone towers that are going to be right beside your houses, your schools, your daycares, all of these things. 
So if you have a cell phone and your cell phone works, you are being hit by one of these towers sending those microwaves directly to your brain. That's how it works. And this is the amount of cell phone towers we have in Canada right now. And in fact, this map, I believe, is a year or two old. You can't even imagine how fast these things go up and how much more and more of these towers are, especially when you start talking about the 4G networks, and then they want to have a 5G and a 6G. So they always need more and more towers. And they say, oh, it's natural. It's just like the sun. This is all normal. This isn't, not, this isn't nature. So this is what's going on. This is why everyone can drive around and their, and their phone works, and they can drive around and be on their phone. So what do we do in our infinite wisdom? You saw all those frequencies that you're just supposed to be at these um, eight or, or so hertz. Now we've got these phones that are at six billion hertz. And we put those up to our heads. And this is how this works. Cordless phones, cell phones, all the same stuff. Microwaves going directly into your brain. That's how it works. That's a base station right here. This is where you guys hang up your phones at night. Definitely don't sleep with one of those by your bed. So this device here needs to get the voice to my head. Why? Because I've removed the cord. I've removed the cord. Now we require some type of fake cord or a microwave that carries that to there. But that doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop at the phone like a cord would where it puts the frequency directly into it. That microwave goes to the phone and into my brain, vibrating all of my brain cells in my entire body at massive amounts of frequencies that I'm not designed to do. So a lot of people have probably been using these phones and they don't even know this. They don't understand the technology and they don't know why. And that's fine, but now you know. Now you're responsible for that knowledge. So this is what's going on. Those things penetrate inside in the brain or they attenuate, whatever the terminology you want to call it is. Bottom line is your brain cells and your ears are being vibrated. This is something else you guys want to look at. How many of you guys got metal fillings in your mouth? You ever thought of what might happen when you start microwaving mercury? The vapor is going into your brain, the frequency changes, all the, all the microwaves bouncing off going into your head and your brain. What about people, uh, the least protected spot on your body is your eyes. A lot of people with glasses in the room I can see already and you're putting those foams up into your head, accepting that microwave directly into your eyeballs. Also the hearing, Curtis talked about it, tinnitus, buzzing, clicking, ringing, tingling in the ears. That's right in the military documents, which I'm about to show you guys. That's not going to go away. And it's not going to help you to continue to exposing your ears to those microwaves. So this is displaying how the microwaves attenuate into the brains. And then the people, especially the pregnant women or people that are soon to be pregnant, will walk around with a cell phone in their pocket or carry a cordless phone or the clip-on baby monitors and the microwaves don't stop at the phone again, they penetrate through. That is the laws of microwaves and electricity which I am representing at this time. This is also what we do. Now we're deciding that, uh, actually I think in 2014 in the United States they're doing a whole bunch of stuff regarding this, but now we're putting microwave chips to monitor where our children grow. So now they're in the womb, they're being exposed. As soon as they get out of the womb, we want to expose them. And actually, before they're even at a point where the, the female is, is pregnant, they're going to be exposed while that female is inside the womb because that female is going to carry her eggs forward that she has for life and carrying around the laptops and school with the Wi-Fi. Baby monitor, same thing. Sending microwaves. This is how the microwaves work. Vibrating the cells of the little children at all times. We're changing the frequencies. We're changing DNA. This is what we do. Schools have already been removing Wi-Fi. That's what Ed was talking about, because they understand, they've looked at it. That's why all the insurance companies will not insure for this, because they know the damage that this stuff causes. And country after country is really starting to look at this and say, why are we inducing our children in classrooms when we can simply hardwire these computers? So it's not about going back to the Stone Age. It's actually just using safe technology. Thank you. So Hydra likes to say things like, oh, there's Wi-Fi in coffee shops, or, or there's, there's Wi-Fi in this room, so everything's fine. Let's put a smart meter on every single house. Here we, here we have here Yale, a reputable university, talking about cell phone use and pregnancy may cause behavioral disorders in offspring. Are we surprised that all these kids are going to school now? They can't pay attention. They have to be on Ritalin. They can't concentrate. They have loss of memory, all these types of things. 
This is part of the problem as well. When Curtis is talking about safety code six, that test is done for a six foot two human, a military man, basically a military a, a soldier. That's not taking into consideration at any point in time children. Their, their, their skulls aren't as thick, they're not fully developed, their immune system isn't fully developed about to the age of 18. They're using a massive man and they're not understanding that these frequencies are penetrating. Test after test shows this stuff. Then we walk into our work environments as we grow up. We're starting to see how there could be a cumulative effect and problems here. Then we start putting these smart meters all over the place on every single house. Then we have gas meters, then we have water meters, and more smart meters, collectors, towers, cell phone towers. And then we start getting into messes like this where we're microwave radiating entire cities. The amount of microwave radiation in this town is going to be extremely high. Never at any point in time in human evolution have we been exposed to this type of stuff. And we're starting to see the effects of these types of things as we move forward. Carcinogenesis, these types of problems. One kilogram, one degree, six minutes. That's the testing that's protecting you. As we might have talked about earlier, if this mannequin's head doesn't heat up to one degree, the soapy liquid inside of it, everything's fine. Don't worry about it. You're all safe. You can be exposed for the rest of your life to as many things as you want, as long as you don't heat up. That's what they're saying. So this comes back to the point where hydro is denying these things. They deny your electrical properties. And why do they do that? So these guys in the telecom industry and all these guys can make lots of money unhindered by any laws or anything. And they're not even taking into consideration the towers that are penetrating the brain. And why I use this label here of 4G networks. Now with the 4G network, you have to be hit with two towers at all times in order for that stuff to work. So you can get your videos on your phone and people can watch YouTube on the bus and radiate everyone else on the bus. So the cell phone industry says we don't want to test these on humans even though there's five billion people on the planet now with cell phone subscriptions. So they're already testing them on humans. We already have those massive cell phone towers all over the place testing them on humans. But they say it's because it wouldn't be ethical. But it is, of course, ethical to market cellular phones directly to babies. So we can get those kids hooked on phones as fast as possible. We can make the most amount of money for the entire lifespan of that uh, consumer. Ethics again. We don't want to test on kids. We, don't, we wouldn't test on babies. We wouldn't do that. We're the telecom industry. We're the microwave industry. We wouldn't do that, would we? 24-7, again, multi-source for life. So this is what they're leaving out of the equation, and they're doing it on purpose so they can proliferate this technology and make a lot of money. All they've done the testing for is the short term and for the thermal level. That's it. They've left out the long-term cumulative exposures, and they'll always say, well, there needs to be more long-term exposure studies than done. You saw those chicken embryos and eggs. That's what happens. What you have, your only gift, your only saving grace is the fact that your immune system tries to compensate for this stuff and it can be in a state that it's trying to heal you. But over time, when you continually microwave radiate your brain, your immune system has troubles. Your immune system has difficulties and all types of diseases and, and disorders can happen. Here's the Naval Medical Research Institute. This is the data that they are uh, uh, giving to us and this is the data that I'm presenting for you right now. Why do I like military documents? I like military documents because the military doesn't mess around. They are very binary, yes or no, zeros and ones. Does this hurt our guys? Can we hurt their guys? How do we protect our guys? How can we allow it so they can't protect their guys? So they did a compilation of 2,300 studies. And these are some of the things that they showed and found. Impotence. Everybody knows what are the top selling drugs out there. Guys are carrying the cell phones around in their pockets. According to the military documents, these are the things they're showing. Also, lack of concentration, loss of memory. This is the military finding this uh, early in the 70s, mid-70s. Then what happens is the Yale studies come out and confirm this. And study after study confirms the exact same thing. That's what science is called. That's what science is. When you have repeatable results over time, with multiple sets of subjects in different areas and different studies, you get the same results, that's what happens. Here we have endocrine gland functions, altered pituitary function, hyperthyroidism, thyroid enlargement. A lot of women sometimes they have problem weight loss, weight gain, what's happening? You got that phone up to your head and your thyroid's all right in here, you're microwaving your whole brain. 
your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, all your glands right in here, you're changing the frequencies. The body's trying to compensate. It can't do it forever. And we're not talking about giant microwave weapon beams. We're talking everything on the spectrum. These are the things that they were finding. Central nervous system effects, headaches, insomnia, restlessness, uh, all these types of cranial nerve disorders, disease after disease, and it changes per subject. And why does that happen? Because all of you have different frequencies, different ages, everything. So you, when you put that up to people, they're going to have all different types of susceptibilities, and these are the things they were finding. Changes in the operation of implanted cardiac pacemakers an electrical device right inside. Now hydro is going to force those things. In the specs of those devices, they are told not to be around cell phones and told not to be around cordless phones. And now hydro is going to force those devices onto their homes. Um, what else do we have? Changes in physiological function. Altered menstrual activity. Altered fetal development. Hopefully, I'm able to try and substantiate, according to the military documents the talk that I was talking about earlier, and all the stuff, when you microwave radiate a fetus before it is even born, Yale, all these guys are finding the exact same things every single time. Decreased lactation in nursing mothers. Changing the frequencies and the operation of the body. This is what happens. Here we have more studies from the Army. This is the Department of the Army. I'm sure they have a lot of reputable scientists who want to know the exact facts and do the work to find them. Radio frequency radio waves. 100% of the population would be susceptible. Why would 100% of the population be susceptible? Because everybody is electrical. Everybody has frequencies. You start changing those frequencies, you have a susceptibility to disease and problems. All these other things, muscle spasms, all the way up to loss of consciousness. Every time they find the same results. Here's the Environmental Protection Agency. 574 pages and 3,627 studies. Already we're over 5,000 studies and documents. What does this do? Zero to 100 gigahertz, everything along the lines of any type of microwaves you can have. Page after page after page after page of, docu of documents and studies just like this. This is just one page out of the studies of effects on the central nervous system. This is what the EPA wanted to present in 1992 in order for people to know, hey, this should be a class, a class 2A carcinogen. This gives people cancer. And they said, no, we don't want to. The government started saying, well, we don't want to enter that stuff in. And they started fast-tracking laws for the FCC to be able to install these towers because they knew this was the effects. And now they try to eliminate the right of choice of all the people, a right of choice to their health. Here's uh, Korean War veterans. More and more documents, more and more studies showing the exact same things. We have the higher rates of exposure, more rates of death. Why? The more microwaves, the more death. This is the stuff that happens. We've shown this over time. They've known about this since the 1930s when they first started using the microwaves to make tables and all different kinds of stuff for heat. And what started happening, part of the determination of the 1,000 microwatts per square centimeter came from when they switched from propeller to jet engines, they needed more powerful radars. And they had our guys sitting by the radars watching this stuff. But these guys were starting to get sick and dying, as we can clearly see here. So what did they say? Well, we need to absolve ourselves from liability because we need to have these guys by these radars. So they just upped the levels of exposure that they thought were safe. And they've left it there. That's where this all happened. Here we have permanent genetic mutation and DNA damage. Time after time, the exact same thing being shown from lower levels of microwave, not at levels that heat you up one degree per kilogram after six minutes, at the lower levels, levels of cell phones, 24 hours of mobile phone exposure. That's genetic damage, that's DNA damage. Study after study is showing this. So Hydra likes to give you some nonsense about these uh, meters going off three or four times a day. There's a background level. That's what it should be. It's over 2,000. Mm. 
So I think you guys get the point of that. Okay, I will explain that. I want to show you some more videos just so we understand that this just isn't a one-off. I'm sure there's a few people here. that are going to be living around meter, uh, meter boxes, meter banks. This is the routers constantly, all day, every single day, sending the microwaves. I'm going to explain what this meter is measuring. It's getting a little bit higher, too. So, this is from the Canadian Human Rights Commission. This is the data I'm representing while being on stage right now. Childhood leukemia near transmitters, impaired motor function, reaction time, memory and attention of school children. The same stuff over and over. Why do we keep seeing the same thing? Why do we keep seeing the same results? Now that device there, that device was, was uh, conking out right around two. Could have been going up to five, somewhere in that range. I, I can't be 100% sure because I wasn't there. However, I will tell you, that even at the two range, microwave hearing, clicking, buzzing, chirping, hissing, or high-pitched threshold notes, these things like tinnitus, people exposing directly to their ears, microwaves vibrating every cell, atom, and molecule inside their brain, uh, headache, dizziness, irritability, fatigue, weakness, insomnia, chest pain, difficulty breathing. A lot of people, you don't even know what's happening if you're exposing these things to yourself. I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you that no one's ever had any of these problems ever before microwaves. That's not what this is about. But if we were told to avoid them, we probably wouldn't have had all this microwave technology. Most of us probably wouldn't be using cordless phones and all these other things. Again, the Canadian Human Rights Commission finding this out in 2007 after re re uh, re looking at piles and piles of documents. So this is what was left out. Millions per day left out. Meter to meter exposure. So they're going to say three to four times a day. Or they're going to say, well, uh, being around one meter for 20 years, it's like a cell phone call. So don't even worry about it. There's no big deal. They're leaving out every meter communicating with all the other meters all day long for no reason. They just communicate. I'll explain to you why, but we don't understand why they would have to uh, communicate with each other. So anyone in this area is going to be attenuating those frequencies. That frequency for meter one is going to go into meter two, and it's going to run through your wiring, going to run through your body, changing your frequencies with every pulse. Now, those single meters pulsing like that, how many people are exposed to this type of stuff? on the other, sides of, uh, other side of the wall of these meters, or being in a building with an electromagnetic field being generated by something like that. Or people sometimes, I, I know in buildings, they walk by in the lobbies, or in the, in, in, they come down the elevator shaft, and that room is right on the other side. So nobody has a choice. And those things are supposed to communicate with your smart appliances all the way up on, on the top tower or whatever it is. So PG&E was forced to disclose in court that these me their meters, when they said, oh, they'd only go off a few times a day, 14,000 to 190,000 pulses per day. Per day. And these were the signals bouncing from the home. So what Hydra likes to tell us is, we're only sending the data to the routers three, four times a day, but they never mention the communication between meter to meter. They never talk about the frequencies they're going at. They just leave all that stuff out of the equation, so they leave the public in the dark about everything. So this is what happens. This is probably pretty typical. Uh, I've been around actually in Kamloops. I found a few more of the routers now. So the people that are going to be closer to these routers, and you're not going to be told, they'll just one day, if they decide to, they'll just put up a router. You live right here, they'll put a router up right there. And there's nothing you can do about it, according to them. So maybe a house further in the periphery of this entire system is going to send signals around. But once it starts, they all start to flow through to the house near the end. And it sends it to the collector, which sends it back to the cell tower, and so on and so on. So instead of leaving this stuff in the wires where it belongs, or having our meter readers going around and checking these meters for how much electricity they're using, we decided to microwave radiate the entire population constantly all day. So Hydro tells us not to worry about this because this is approved by this particular gentleman here, Mr. John Blatherwick. So one guy has said this is safe. So when they go to your city councils or chiefs and councils, they say, don't worry, John Blatherwick said it's okay. You're assuming that there's a huge increase. I think that there won't be. A, a and I think we'll be able to show that. 
hydro is adding up all these microsecond bursts of energy, which are only a fractions of seconds. And they add them all up together, and it comes to two or three minutes a day. And they say, on average, we're only transmitting two or three minutes a day. When in fact, they are transmitting every couple of minutes at a fairly powerful burst of energy. And uh, do you know anything different about that? Can I, you know? No. The, the answer is, is I can't debate that with you because I do not know. I do not know the specifics. So the answer is I can't debate that with you. Okay, so as it stands right now, because I have tested it. He doesn't know the specifics. So you're safe because he approved it. He has no idea what's going on, but he's the guy that BC Hydro puts in their pamphlets that says, don't worry, John Blatherwick approved this stuff. You should feel safe. Uh, Blather, I'll, we'll get to that after. Uh, also, they also say BC, BC's provincial health officer has said this is safe. So, so they use two guys, two guys' opinions, and they say, don't worry, these guys said it's fine. Here he is in this article, clearly some biological effects. There's clearly effects, but who cares? We'll put them on the house anyway. These are the guys that approved your meters. Remember John Blatherwick? Remember our military documents? Here's what John Blatherwick says. If you truly are harmed by this level of radiation, you can't live in a major city. And what did our military documents say? 100% of the population would be susceptible. This is not my opinion, this is electricity speaking. This is incompatibility with the human body of microwaves, with your electrical fields, with your frequencies. Here we have more uh, 8,000 research articles on animals. Suppression of the immune system. Remember I talked about that. It's the same with animals. Why? Because animals are electrical. They have their own unique frequencies. They are not to be microwaved. You saw the results of those microwave radiation of those ch uh, chick eggs. You're not supposed to be that. You only, again, have the advantage of your immune system being on your side for as long as it wants to keep you repaired. So we see this over and over again. Bees, same thing. They're not designed to withstand the frequencies. They've never been exposed to that. We see all our bees dying. I'm not gonna sit up here and tell you that's exactly and only the cause, but why would we microwave radiate them? Why would we change their navigation mechanisms? We're compromising their immune systems. Now they get the varroa mites or they don't return to the hive. And we wonder, why is this happening? And these things are so healthy, in fact, that in California, they're already removing them because of the health effects. Yes. Soon enough, it will be BC. BC Hydro also likes to come out and talk to your city council's radio is safe. Why was the Vatican found liable for giving people a higher rate of cancer in the, the vicinity of their radio towers? Why did the courts find that? That was just recent, again. So when you actually start to do the research and you look into this and you understand a very basic equation, you come to the same thing that these tens of, or thousands and thousands of studies come to. You can't change people's frequencies. You can't microwave radiate people without having problems. So after this, they say, after decades of research, there are no demonstrable health effect or environmental effects from exposure to low-level radio frequencies signals. Again, all they are taking into effect, did the person heat up? No, they didn't. Nothing happens. Don't worry about it. So every time you put that cell phone up to your head or your cordless phone in your homes, that's, this is the stuff that's happening. Finally, are we still trusting Health Canada? Lead, DDT, pesticides, asbestos, dozens of prescription drugs, tobacco, chlordane, trans fats, mercury fillings. I may not be as qualified as some people would like me to be, but I sure could probably guess that putting one of the most toxic substances known to man in your mouth probably wouldn't be a good idea. I would probably venture to guess that direct inhalation of smoke into your lungs for long periods of time is probably not going to be a good idea. And yet we still trust these people. Pesticides, things that break down the nervous system of biological entities and end up in your food supply and water and into your body have no effect on you. This is Health Canada changing all the frequencies of the entire population and denying that they're doing it. Again, 
I put this side in here because I wanted to make sure I mentioned this. This is about cumulative exposure. I'm not going to sit up here and say that if you use a cell phone once, you're going to die tomorrow. I'm going to tell you that you keep exposing yourself to this type of stuff, you have problems. And when people don't give you a choice, that's where the problems come in. When we don't even let our little children have a choice with this stuff, this is where the problems come in. You mean to tell me the same guys that messed it all up with tobacco and all those other things are going to tell me this is fine. For my son, your kids, your future babies, grandkids, yourselves, gas, water, or gas smart meters, water smart meters, hydro smart meters, routers, cordless phones, smart appliances, the routers, cell phone towers. You're actually going to tell me that this is safe to microwave radiate yourselves. No, I don't believe this to be true. What are our alternatives? A gentleman in the front row over here said, we need to go back to the Stone Age. No, we just put the stuff back in the wires where it belongs. Very simple. Anybody remember like 1990 when everything was fine, we could all talk on our phones, everything worked, society functioned pretty well? Is that the Stone Age? No, rotary, phone. rotary phone, yes. Okay, so this is all we have to do. Once you remove that wire from the equation, and I'm not excited about having to use a wireless mic, I'm using it because I have to, you have to have microwaves. You must have microwaves, and that is where the frequency conflict comes into the equation. Smart meters, following the money. The telecom industry, following the money. The politicians, following the money. Let's do that right now. Here it is, black and white. Here's your members of the BC Liberal Party or current reformer members, or very, very, very close relationships and ties, either with past jobs or donations or things thereof. These guys are all on the board of Hydro, members of the Liberal Party or something like that, and guess what else they are? They're, they're on the board of our papers, so we never get a straight answer out of our Vancouver Suns and, and the province and all these guys. You hear they take some person, complain about it, and you get Hydra with four paragraphs explaining how much they're safe. These guys, and these are the same uh, Vancouver Sun and all these guys, pulling in 13, 14, 15 million dollars of your taxpayer advertising dollars in order to sell this program for BC Hydro. And the same papers that make millions and millions advertising for telecoms industries. But we have another part of this equation. We also know that the primary shareholders of a company of Corex are also people that are on the board at Hydro, are also in the Liberal Party. What is this about? Is this BC Hydro or Corex Hydro? When did I decide that BC Hydro and Corex were all buddies and partners and, and all going to be having this nice relationship and funneling money back and forth to each other? Do you guys want to know what Hydro actually is? Hydro is just a big liability. That's all it is. Anything that's a liability is BC Hydro. Anything that's a profit is an independent power producer or a subcontracted entity. So what happens here? If you guys have cell phones on, please shut them off. That would be really appreciative. What happens here is we send all of the liabilities to us. So we pay for the smart meters, the transmission lines, the cables, the routers and everything, and all the profits go to independent power producers and these private companies. This is about mandatory meters. Why do they want mandatory meters, no choice and all this stuff? So they can sell mandatory smart appliances. They can make all of you retrofit your entire homes with smart appliances. More and more money for these guys. So if you have a blown appliance, that's fine with them. Go out and buy a smart appliance. Thank you very much. And what is this industry? They're looking to realize a 500% increase in profits in four years. Now all those other guys, you'll know that they have all buddies at GE and all these other things, all these same guys that make the smart appliances, the routers, the cables, Cisco Systems, IBM, they're all shareholders. Here is the big deal. Now this is not my opinion, this is coming straight out of the smart grid guys, the smart grid news, the guys who look into this stuff. The bottom line, they say, we're going to need a lot of sensors and monitors and somebody is going to make billions selling them. Where are those billions going to come from? These lawmakers pass the laws to force the money out of your pocket directly into their hands. And of course, it's got to be safe, right? Otherwise, the money wouldn't go to them. 
Here's another one. You can see the most profitable industries, iTron, IBM, Cisco, network and other communications equipment. I wonder why, because when they get the governments to subsidize their profits, that's a pretty easy thing to make a big pile of money. And here you can see already, these are the routers you're going to see, the collector stations. What do we see right here? iTron, BC Hydro, TELUS all buddies, all together with each other, all funneling money back and forth in and out of your pockets into their pockets. Here we go, our former public safety minister, you know the guy that should be protecting us? Well now he works for TELUS. Isn't that very interesting? You know TELUS, the guys that are running this grid and doing all this stuff? The former industry minister, another person that should be sitting around saying, should we really be putting 900 million hertz into a 60 hertz grid? He doesn't care. He works for Bell now. How about independent testing? Hydra says, don't worry, we had some independent testing done. We're going to tell your city councils, we're going to tell your chief and councils, it's all independent and we did it and you can live and die by this data. This was done by a company called PlanetWorks Consulting. The person who was doing the test was a man by the name of Carl Reardon. Carl Reardon is a former director and general manager of Motorola. He's collecting paychecks from consultation on cell tower installations, so surely he wouldn't find any problem with the smart meters, because that would be a direct contradiction to his paycheck. Holder of several, seven US and EU patents on wireless data and technology. Well, certainly he wouldn't want to get in the way of his money, would he? Chief Technology Officer of Wireless Wave, uh, Image. So we can see, is this very independent? I don't really think so. And these are the people at Hydro saying, trust Carl Reardon, he's going to tell you the truth. This is the same guy that went around and did the Wi-Fi testing in the, in the schools on a CTV program and told everyone this was all safe. Don't worry, microwave radiate your kids for 1,200 hours a year, for 10, 15 years, whatever it is. They're fine. I'm Carl Reardon, I'm gonna let you know. No risk, PlanetWorks Consulting. Again, independent engineering study, you're safe. Health Canada researchers, they're also getting paid by Motorola. They have publications that are paid for by Motorola. All these guys, you can see a giant web of deceit to make you guys believe this stuff is safe. You can't microwave radiate your brain all day long. This is the same Health Canada. We're trusting these guys still. I, I can't get over this, this stuff. Any one of these is an issue. Any one of these as an oversight, a mistake, we didn't see it, is a problem. You start piling these up and more, Conservation and savings, this is the big thing. First of all, I know most of the people in the room have heard about the bills going through the roof. This is not about conservation, and you're gonna find out why. We're powering the world at our expense now. BC Hydro, which is really independent power producers, they piggyback off our grid to sell the power they produce in our province, and by the way, most of the time, they get us to pay for the facilities, and they have a free ride all the way. Well, they don't even have to sell the power in Canada. They can sell it down to California. So who do you think has the cheapest rates in North America? Us. Who do you think has the most expensive rates in North America? California. So they're going to keep selling the power down to California from now on. And until we start matching California's bids, they're not even going to look at us. So they can do run of rivers, destroy our province, frack, natural gas, LNG, all that stuff to generate electricity. They don't even have to sell it to us. That's, that's another part of the equation that's a little bit of a mess. So they're going to spend billions of dollars just in BC alone, and we're not even allowed to, to know how they're spending that money. The public has been blocked from knowing it. Why? Because if we knew where the money was going, we'd probably find out it's all going to all their buddies' pockets. So that's what's happening. So now you're not even allowed to know where your tax dollars are being spent. And they're doing this all over Canada. Billions and billions of dollars. It's in the hundreds of billions of dollars that they're doing all these projects. And guess what? At the end of them, guess what happens? They go right to the independent power producers, and they get to do whatever they want with it. So this is the BC Energy Plan. This is, this is how our government decided we're going to move forward with BC and the jobs and all the uh, nonsense they talk about. They give away the public rivers for free and get them to finance the facilities and commit to purchase the power from that at exorbitant rates. And at the end of that process, the private company owns the river rights the infrastructure, and they can sell their power to whomever they want for whatever they want forever. Did you know that they have big heritage contracts out? 
And now there's going to be different sets of rates. So all these giant mining companies and all these other guys, what they do, the independent power producer sells the power to BC Hydro. BC Hydro will pay them 11 cents a kilowatt hour or something like this. And guess what BC Hydro does? They sell it to the mining companies for 3 cents. And you get to pay that difference. Now in Kamloops, they're putting up one mine over in Kamloops called Ajax Mines. Ajax Mine itself isn't even a huge mine. That mine alone will use more power than all the citizens in Kamloops combined. You get to pay that cost differential. And you think the rates aren't going to go up? So now what does BC Hydro become? A liability, a clearinghouse for theft for these guys. So here we go. Look at all these projects that are going on. All these independent power producers, all these run of river projects, destroying our rivers, spawning habitats, all these other things. All these things are happening and you're paying for them and none of these guys have to sell the power back to you. They can just ship it down to California for a higher price. Another way your rates are gonna go through the roof. And also, BC Hydro is already in billions of dollars of debt. They have 28 different deferral accounts. So now they're billions of dollars in debt, and they're going to decide to spend billions of dollars on smart meters that we don't even need. And they're, of course, paying themselves their bonus for profits that they didn't even make because they just deferred the debt to later on when they want to bankrupt Hydro and take over all their assets. And that is what they're going to do if we don't stop them. So they are talking about, well, I think if you don't want to have a meter, you should have to pay an extra fee because you, you wanted to opt out. Hmm, that is a very interesting concept. So I would have to pay an extra fee because I want to have a $50 analog meter versus a $500 smart meter. I, want to, I need to pay an opt-out fee because I want a device that lasts 40 to 50 years versus five years requires no extra infrastructure, doesn't require data stores, doesn't require extra electricity, and you're going to tell me I need to pay more. These meters, we're going to have a constant cash cow for Corix and all these meter makers. You think about, you guys got computers, cordless phones, that's, how long do those things last? They don't last 40, 30, 40, 50 years. How many, has, how many people have ever had a cell phone that lasts more than two or three or four years? Because the device itself is microwaving itself. So all the mechanisms inside it are breaking it down. They have no choice. So that's the same thing that's going to happen with a smart meter. It starts to wear down and you get to buy them all back at $500 a pop. Who's going to pay for that? They've been doing pilot projects. Not much effect on energy consumption. Oh, of course not. Here's another one. This is from the Attorney General of uh, Connecticut. Results showed no beneficial impact on total energy usage. Of course it didn't. Why? Why would these guys who are independent power producers want to allow at any time a device on your house that would cut into their ability to make a profit? Of course they wouldn't do that. It doesn't make business sense at all. So now we start getting down to the math and the money. So this is not about saving. This is about profiting. They would never put a device on your house that would require you to use less electricity. We could already see that in the billing that's happening now. Rate payers will see rates jump 100, 300%. This is the same slide I've had since I started doing this about a year ago, because we knew this was going to happen. Why? Because it happens everywhere else. This is the nature of the smart meter. You start playing these little electrical equations that don't make sense. You ram in these meters, you get faulty consumption rates, consumption patterns. And what about the people who don't even know the rates went up 5% and they didn't even use it, or 10%. Instead of $200, they're getting charged $220. And they say, oh, well, maybe that looks, that looks appropriate. Who makes the money? The independent power producers. Who's the one who pays for those meters to communicate with each other? You do. And what do you think happens when that meter communicates with that other meter? That electricity, that signal goes into your house. Who pays for all the routers and everything else? You do. And this money goes straight into the independent power producers' pockets. Rising prices, rising private profits. This is a money game, and there's a lot of money involved here. They say the reason for some of the building, oh, well, it was an unusually cold winter. Well, that's just another straight-up lie, because according to the facts, the, the, the warmer winter, it was warmer by about 2.7 degrees this year. Or they'll say, oh, well, you were cooking in the holidays. Well, I didn't know if I turned on my stove, my bill would go up 300%. I didn't know how that's how it worked. Or if I have a hot tub and you put in a smart meter, now my bill needs to go up 500%. And don't kid yourself, this is exactly what's been happening. 
So they're saying, oh, it's going to make the meters more accurate. BC Hydro tells us their analog meters are 99% accurate. Why are we spending billions of dollars? Why are we spending billions of dollars for 1% of accuracy? It's not for accuracy. It's so these guys can make money. 98.6 of analog me meters measured within 2% of the registered energy usage. That's so interesting. Why are we changing these meters? They last for 30, 40 years for a five-year meter at 1,000% higher cost. Privacy, big issue. Okay, this is all about selling your private data. That's all this is. This is another phase of the game. They want to collect all your data, all your emails, your Facebook, your text message, Twitter, whatever it is you people are into, your phone conversations. They want to sell all this stuff. This is what the smart grid is designed for. More of your data in the cloud. I'm going to explain the cloud and how the cloud works, and you're going to understand this entire system. This is all about this utility data. And they're going to pull this data out of your house, and they're going to sell it to people, and they're not even going to give you a cent. This is where they're going to be doing this stuff. They have data storage facilities. I've heard that they're going to be building one in Vernon because of the fault lines and all these other different things. This is one of two facilities. The amount of electricity required for the data storage is astronomical, and there's no reason to store this data, but you get to pay for it, of course. Here we go. Remember this here. World-leading uh, Kamloops Data Center. New, new facility, cornerstone of cloud computing solutions for TELUS. Remember our buddies TELUS? The customers include BC Hydro. Interesting. So now you get to pay for TELUS, a private company, out of your pocket to store your data, and TELUS can sell it to whoever they want and not give you a cent for doing it. So this is the type of stuff that they're going to be doing. What else is in this for the utilities? You can't read this at the bottom. Additionally, utilities would be able to monetize, monetize the value of the data. So now, again, here, this is not my opinion. This is straight out of the industry sources. Who would want to own and sell your data? Your buddies at Corex. Tell us. All these guys selling your data. Oh, and how are they going to be able to do that? Don't worry about it. Your politicians change the privacy laws. Behind your back, Freedom of Information Act, all these things. So now your data is for sale so their companies can make a mint. Here's another situation. We're talking about privacy. Paranoid, are we paranoid or educated on the topic? Can they actually spy on us in our own homes? What is the chief of the CIA saying? Again, removing opinion. We'll spy on you through your dishwasher. Items of interest will be located, identified, monitored, and remotely controlled to cloud computing. What is an item of interest? You. Here's how they want to do this. They have a central location. Look at this already deciding how they're going to be able to control your heart. Could you imagine something like that going on on this planet? Items of interest. Using the cloud for monitoring. When you send the microwaves throughout the entire household, you've turned the house into a cloud. You've turned the house into a system that anything electronic can be monitored inside of it. You have your own electrical frequency. Anytime you get upset, your breathing patterns, anything you want can be monitored. That's why you guys all have chips in your credit cards and bank cards now. You're walking down the street, you can be found any second by that chip, by the electricity of it. Popular science, removing opinion, removing qualification. I'm sure the guys at popular science may know a thing or two about what they're talking about. Seeing through walls with a wireless router. That's what I was talking about, the cloud. Now they can look right inside your house. Look at this little police officer with this little gadget. He can spy directly into your house. I want you to notice something. Why is this arrow here? Why do we have this router here? They can create, those microwaves generate a picture of what's happening inside your home, just like a radar. When the plane flies by and it shows a little blip, only think way more and exp exponentially advanced. They've had a lot of time and years and billions of your dollars to spend on figuring this stuff out. Each breath you take can be monitored. This is them talking. It's possible to detect a person's breath rate by surrounding him with radio waves. Look at this picture. Does this, re does this picture remind you of anything? This is their data, not mine. This is their picture they generated through their studies. Remind you of anything? Your entire house is going to be retrofitted with radio waves, with all these appliances. Blasting radio frequency signals off you. Now you understand why the meters have to go off 190,000 times a day. Because they need to generate that picture. 
They can see inside every single household every single second they want to with all these signals. I walk through a microwave field, they can find me. My house will generate a picture. That's how the cloud works. And then when you extrapolate that out, you surround the entire town with the frequencies. There's not even one single hole in the grid. Now, how do you do that? You put a wireless router on every single house. You don't even have a choice now to have internet or not internet. What is that wireless router? Smart meter. Now you have paid for TELUS to be able to roll out wireless internet on every single home in BC. And they have zero cost or expense. And they piggyback everything through all the grid that BC Hydro made. Do you, is everyone understanding this is an absolute lie and scam? Yes, I am very sure. I am exactly sure. Why would they want to do that? When you pull your orange juice out of the fridge, so, you, you control you, my breathing. No, no, it's the So when you let's let's take an example how this can work. I pull my orange juice out of the fridge. You guys seen those little squares that they have on all the things now? With it looks like a UPC code. You ever seen those? It reads that. It's going to know exactly what's in there. Then they can sell that data to Tropicana or the other orange juice producer. Do you want to be able to have the right to speak through that guy's fridge to tell him there's a sale on at Save On, Safeway, or someone else? And they pay for that also. There's that. You may not be a person that they would want to do anything to, but they could, and they can find out. And it's not necessarily about controlling breathing or doing all these things. It's a possibility. It's something they can do. That's not to say that they're going to do that to every single person. That is a capability of the technology. They can generate a picture of every person's house every single second because that's how the cloud works. Again, think about a plane flying through the sky. It shows a picture on the radar screen. Fast forward about 80 years, and this is what you have. This is popular science talk, and this is all the grid data. This is all their data talking. This is not my opinion. Security, we're going to talk about hacking. The Pentagon, CIA, NATO, all these guys, military drones, security firms that deal specifically with hacking, they can get hacked. They get hacked all the time. You open up your computer, you do a search for hacking. Who was hacked today? You will find something. It happens constantly. Stratfor, trading companies, uh, algorithms for, for banks, all these things, they're hacked. A bunch of kids at a Texas college are hacking into drone systems. And BC Hydro wants to tell me that this little, this little meter on the side of my house is protected from hacking. My data that they're sending out into the middle of the air that they can, anyone with a little computer can pull out and read can know exactly all the stuff that those guys are measuring. Security pros, again, these are the people who deal with the, the cyber security experts. I'm not going to claim to be a cyber security expert, but when the experts speak, I tend to listen. Hacking into the, the smart grid. So BC Hydro says, we have the white hat hackers. They come and they've, they haven't been able to hack the grid. Why has everyone else besides the guy Hydro's been hiring been able to hack their grids? Hack smart grids constantly, repeatedly, over and over. This stuff doesn't last. So now, moving forward, you're going to have to pay for all the security, the protection of your own information, and people are going to make a pile of money. Microsoft, Cisco, all these systems designers. So we have a constant threat of a problem. This is going to reduce theft, 100 million a year, saving money for ratepayers, for, for all of the, the dope growers. They're going to stop the dope growers with the smart meters. Very interesting stuff. This is how this works. They can already fake the readings. These guys have already found ways to fake the hydro readings. They don't even have to play with the wires and electricity. They'll just fake the readings. If you, um, absolutely no power consumption at all. Again, these are from all these guys, the industry guys. These are the, these are the guys that are uh, talking about this stuff. If you want to stop the marijuana grow up industry, thermal, thermal imaging, fly over a town any night of the week, any night of the year, and you'll see a thermal imprint of it. That house, 401 Fifth Street, they got to grow up. Those lights, they admit that. They can stop that, but why would they really want to do that? Because the IPPs wouldn't make a big pile of money charging for all that electricity, now would they? For all the people who legitimately hook up to it. That's not what they want to do, and this will not stop theft. Organized crime is always ahead. I don't support them, I don't care about them, but don't expect to be stopping these guys. 
Hackers rewrite the smart meter power bill. Again, this is a different company talking about a different uh, situation. Alter energy con consumption rates altogether. They could figure out what movies customers were watching in their own homes. They can find out whether the DVD you're watching in your DVD player has been burned or bought from the store, pirated or not. Oh, what does the FBI say? This is the FBI. So we start talking about reputations. FBI, CIA, these guys are talking about. Smart grid electric meters altered to steal electricity. That's the FBI. Accountability, that's what Hydro talks about. Hacks are likely to spread. The FBI is telling Hydro, and then the Hydro's turn around and telling the FBI, we got it under control, don't worry about it. BC Hydro's already had its own security breaches. This was June 18th of this year, and they're gonna tell us about hacking. Again, talking about the marijuana industry, $7.5 billion a year, the second largest industry in BC. They could stop it if they wanted to. You're not gonna shut them down with smart meters or a smart grid, that's not how it works. Home safety liability from fires. People are concerned about house fires. Is there, um, that are caused by the smart meters? Is that a possibility? There's absolutely no um, incidents yeah. of house fires being caused by a meter. Let me, let me tell you how this, how this meter works. First of all, this is a measurement device. It doesn't carry a charge. Basically what happens is the power comes in through the top, it gets measured, and it comes out through the bottom. There's absolutely no way that these two um, connectors can come in contact with each other. There's no way that this can, she says it's a measurement device. While that is true, do you know that's the only device on your home that's first of all not CSA approved, UL approved, and second of all, it's the only device on your home that allows for 928 million hertz to go directly into your 60 hertz grid. All the stuff Curtis was showing earlier, trying to tell us that these things do not cause fires. And living on the fact that the two prongs, they don't touch each other, so what's there to worry about? Here we are, we're having these fires all over BC. These are, just, these are just some of the ones that have actually been reported and actually got into the paper. Fire after fire, another one in Nanaimo. Here's Coquitlam. Uh, Sparwood, BC, the post office. Uh, Alberni. Another fire, swap out. What were we talking about? 18 year old kids running around with no idea what they're doing, getting paid commission to go as fast as possible, pulling out these meters. Another fire in Alberta. That is a different fire. If you can actually exactly notice this, this is different from the other one. So two in Alberta already. Mission BC. How unfortunate for this person. BC Hydro is telling her it's her fault because there might have been a problem with the meter base. So it was up to her to note the exact moment in time when the Corex installer was going to come out and pull out the meter. Then she exactly, like everyone else in BC, needed to be a qualified electrician in order to be able to look at that and say, I don't think it's safe for you to put in that meter. And if she wasn't home at that exact time, which almost none of you are going to be, and if she's not a qualified electrician to know any difference between what's going on, whether this is a safe or not meter base, she's gonna be in a lot of trouble. And trouble she is in because her house burned down one day after the installation. It's her fault. That is her fault, BC Hydro says, because her meter, her base station, they got electricians way down the road, if, if they even do have that. Now, what do we have? We have a very dangerous situation. I'll explain later. Unusual number of fires from smart meters linked in Ontario. Pickering, Ontario. Now we start getting into the United States. We start getting to California. Nope, definitely not the smart meter there. More and more smart meter fires. More in California. Naples, Florida. Uh, I'm not sure where this one was again. Victoria, so it looks like in Australia. Uh, Georgia. More and more fires continually happening. Why? Because it's the laws of electricity that you cannot disobey. You can't put 928 million hertz into 60 hertz. And you can't have young kids doing it. Here's more fires. A bank of smart meters spontaneously combusting. 
That's what these guys are fixing right now. Anybody own a building, an apartment complex, a duplex, a fourplex, something like that? Your problem, your fault, somebody dies in your building, deal with it. Here's Palo Alto, Palo Alto, California. Well, piles of smart meters exploded. None of the analog meters did, though. That's such an odd occurrence. Here's an insurance adjuster. A real threat to the safety of your home. Personally worked with two large homeowner fires in which the smart meters were determined as responsible. And Cindy Vershur, the hydro rep, says, no fires whatsoever. It's absolutely impossible. Here's your electrical trade unions in uh, Australia. Again, saying, guys, what are you doing? You can't do this to people's houses. Homeowner's fault in not keeping up with the infrastructure, usually a faulty meter base. That's your problem. They used to replace 40,000 old analog meters per year with, with new ones. How many fires were happening with that? Probably close to zero. Why? You got qualified electricians doing the proper job and the proper allotment of time, not being rushed and not being paid commission. Here's Corex Group of Companies, big bag of cash. This is your fault. Your fault. How am I? I'm not an electrician. How am I supposed to be home at the exact time and pull that off and know whether or not that meter base is faulty or not? They're lying through their teeth and backtracking and absolving themselves of liability on Corex's behalf. You never hear Corex coming out and saying anything, do you? So we got BC Hydro, we got Corex, we got homeowners, we got the insurance company. Who cares who's liable? I don't care who's liable. I just want to be safe in my own home. I don't want to get uh, a $50,000 payout because I had a fire in my house and my lungs got damaged, so my insurance company determined that uh, I'm, I uh, deserve $50,000. I just want my lungs. I don't want any of you guys to have burns on your arms or face. I don't want you to get paid out a liability for that. So these are all the problems. No warning. They installed 1.5 million meters, and they didn't tell anybody about the meter bases until the fires happened, and they struggled, and they were looking around for excuse, and they said, oh, you guys got to check your bases. Lie. Okay, unqualified. Most fires won't happen right away. That's what we talk about, the festering electrical problems that can just pop up at any time when you're sleeping, whenever. Uh, also, the microwaves, they've done the testing on this. You start vibrating building materials, metals, plastics, jackets on wiring, breakers, any of that stuff. Uh, with incompatible frequencies, those start to wear down through time. Your roofing, your siding, the caulking on your windows, your drywall, all that stuff. So now we have the breakdowns in the materials on your property and your home. Here is the issues. You can't put 928 million hertz into 60 hertz. And now they're going to tell us it's safe as well to put 2.4 billion hertz simultaneously in the 928 million hertz into a 60 hertz grid. And if it doesn't work out and the house burns down, that's your problem because we installed it. Yes, they definitely want you to do that. So this is how I'm going to explain this. They tell us there's a lead plate here that's going to protect you, so don't worry. First of all, what would I ever need to be protected of? Second of all, they couldn't measure consumption because you can't put those prongs into the back of a lead plate and allow the meter to actually measure anything. You'd have copper, you'd have gold, you'd have silver or something like that. You wouldn't have lead. And even if you're getting all this lead, all this talk about this environmentally safe and better for the green and all this stuff, why are you making lead plates? Smart appliances pulsing into the meter, into the grid, 2.4 billion hertz, all of those appliances. Meters communicating with other meters, that jumping all the way into your grid, going around your wiring and coming back to the meter. Not only 928, but 2.4 billion hertz at the same time. We can't even believe how crazy these guys are to, th to think about doing something like this. Uh, that's a different story altogether. We'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff. Here's again, here's a better picture of looking at the microwave cloud. So you see you have all these smart appliances. Now when you're running all these microwaves through the house, you can generate a picture of the home. This is what I'm trying to uh, uh, press to you guys to understand. They're not even taken into consideration. That rotor communicating with the meter, that rotor is going to send that signal all the way through your wiring. And you'd wonder why your appliances would blow. You wonder why there'd be fires. You wonder why there'd be higher bills. All these things are happening and Hydro is denying it. So you can't have the ability to spy on people in a house, but you would always have this. You're always going to have fires. You're always going to have these problems. 
one day after installation. Is Canada a, still a democracy? 55% vote against the meters. Too bad you're getting them anyway. Why? Because we wouldn't get paid. We don't care about democracy. We just want to steal. We want to take people's money. So they deny democracy to everybody, the premier, everybody else. All the other parties don't think the NDP or the PC or whoever is going to save you. And I don't care about any party. I don't represent. I'm not for or against. I'm just telling you, they're all doing the same thing. They all get paid. It's all the same. 55% vote probably more than the people that actually voted for the current party in power. And what do they say? Well, we don't care. It's not legally binding. We have 54 communities, uh, First Nations and non-First Nations communities that have said, we don't want the meters, representing millions of people. Too bad you're getting them anyway. Why? Because we need to get paid. So look, we have our premier. Oh, yes, Mr. Veteran Soldier, I care about you so much. I respect what you did over there. And you guys, why don't we have our boys over in Afghanistan dying right now for freedom and democracy? We're, we're going to deny those very same privileges and rights to our own citizen on our homeland. That is disrespect. So what does the program really do? Skyrocketing bills and make private uh, producers rich. Risk security of your grid and your whole grid. Sell your data for money turns house into a microwave, creates inflation, more lost jobs, but higher bills, people paying more money for energy, less money for other goods, and those same businesses having to charge higher prices because they have to pay for the energy, blown appliances, mandatory smart appliances now that you have to pay, causing fires, risking health of all organisms, increases consumption, ruins the environment. How could this happen? How could something like this happen? We have let these, these foxes in the hen house do this to us. We cannot for any circumstances accept these meters. You can't for the sole principle of not wanting to burn in your own house. This is an accident waiting to happen. You've been explained all the reasons. So who do you trust your children's safety, money, privacy, security, democ democratic rights of choice with? We have our next generations of kids. A lot of you got grandkids, some kids in the audience. Do you trust these guys? These liars and thieves. Thank you very much for coming here tonight to be educated. We are going to have a question and answer now, so if there's some uh, topics or subject matters we didn't cover. Uh